Hi everyone! For those of you who are visiting my channel for the first time, I'm Mika Kim. I used to be a consultant at one of the big four consulting firms, and now I'm a software engineer at a tech company. If you want to see more videos about my consulting or software engineer life, please click on the subscribe button below. In this video, I will be talking about how I got a job in consulting straight out of college with a low GPA. And I mean low. Not like a B plus low, but like very, very low. And I'm not sure if I should be proud or ashamed of that. Anyways, in addition, during my time at Deloitte, so spoiler alert, that big four consulting company that I used to work for was Deloitte, I have been involved in the resume screening process for new grads. So I'll be able to share some insights and highlight what the firm considers a stellar candidate. And that's not all. Do you want to know what the easiest way to land a consulting job is? At the end of the video, I will be talking about the shortcut or so-called the golden ticket way of landing a job in consulting. So stay tuned till the very end and let's get started. So to kind of preface this conversation and to make things a bit more clear, none of my family members or friends worked at Deloitte. I did not have any connections nor did I get the job handed to me, nor did I get a referral to land this job. I applied through the traditional method of cold applying via their career website. I submitted my resume and went through the whole interviewing process myself. So for those of you who are interested in landing a career in consulting, you might be thinking, if you have a low GPA, isn't that an auto reject? Honestly, I thought so too. Because I had a pretty low GPA consistently throughout college, I didn't even think about applying to consulting jobs because I knew one of the baseline criteria for hiring consultants out of college is a good GPA. So throughout college, even for internship roles, I didn't even bother applying to consulting roles because I knew my GPA would be an auto reject criteria. And even when I was applying for full-time jobs, the only reason how I ended up applying for this role was because the job title was business technology analyst, new grad. So I thought, oh, this is a business analyst job. Cool, let me try applying. Maybe I'll have a shot at that. And only when I started going through the interview process that I realized that this was actually a consulting role. And because it was a new grad entry level position, it was named analyst. So a quick mini moral of the story is, even if you don't think you meet the minimum criteria for a job, just apply. You have nothing to lose. So all right, back to my original story. After applying to this job, to my surprise, I was invited to the first round of interview. And I tried to analyze how I made it through the resume screening process. And that answer struck to me while I was doing my on-site interview. Are you ready for it? Here comes the big reveal. Have a unique niche that other candidates don't have. Huh? What does that super generic broad sentence mean? So most candidates that apply for new grad consulting jobs will be pretty similar. So first of all, they probably went to some target business school, have pretty good grades, and have some kind of extracurricular or activities that's related to consulting. So for instance, they might have been part of their school's consulting club, or have some awards and some case competitions. But I was pretty different from those candidates. I had a bachelor in mathematics with a minor in computer science, and also had some internship experiences in technology. During my final interview with the partners, I noticed that they were very, very interested in my technical background. They asked me about my achievements during my internships as a dev, as a QA, as a BA, etc. And they asked me in-depth questions about tech stacks that I've used before, as well as things that I've built in hackathons. And we spent a good chunk of my interview time discussing those things. In addition, they were very curious to hear about my startup experience in school. So back when I was in university, since the school I went to was a very STEM heavy school and our school had put in a lot of resources at the time to help student entrepreneurs grow their startups. And I, like many other students, had the urge to pursue entrepreneurship. Hence, I was part of a three person startup. Our little startup, it's almost kind of embarrassing to call it a startup, but we were part of our school incubator. We had some funding. We even had our first client for a bit, but it quickly crumbled down. Anywho, so that mini adventure of my startup experience back in university was something that the partners at the company were very interested in hearing about. And they even asked me, what are some learnings that you have gone through through the failure of your startup? 
And if there are any things that you can change about it, what would those things be? So to kind of take a step back, when I was working at Deloitte, everyone at the firm overused this term of what's your story. So whenever there's like a networking event or if you're going out for promotions, a common phrase thrown around would be, what is this person's story? So why am I bringing this up? So if I bring that question of what is your story and apply it to myself as a candidate, I had a story that stood out. I was a very technical candidate with a degree that reflects it, co-op experiences backing it up, which set me apart from a lot of candidates. And also for that extra sprinkle on top, I was able to show off many valuable traits, such as tenacity, leadership, taking initiatives, not being afraid of challenges, through my startup experience. So to sum this up, as a resume screener, if you're going through my resume, yes, this person has pretty horrible grades, but it does sound like a pretty interesting candidate. I'm sorry if you expected this video to give you some magical trips that will kind of trick your way into the consulting field because that's not what this video is about. I created this video to tell you that you shouldn't be discouraged because you think your low average blocks you from having a career in consulting. Cause like you have me as an example. I know I keep saying I had bad grades, but they were pretty bad. Like I said, it's not like I got like a B minus and I'm saying, oh man, my grades suck. Like they were actually pretty horrendous. So instead of trashing out your consulting dreams, Think about what you have accomplished and how you can angle that into telling your own unique story. How can you position yourself to be an interesting candidate that stands out? In your resume and your cover letter, highlight these experiences that tell your story and make sure that you craft it in a way so that it stands out. So let's say for instance, you're part of the school basketball varsity team. Instead of writing a one-liner at the bottom of your application saying that you're part of the school varsity team, Try to write a story and come up with examples of what you have accomplished through that experience. So for instance, maybe through being part of your basketball team, you showed off exceptional leadership skills, or you can talk about how you are a great team player, or maybe you have some kind of story of how you're an underdog and you put in all this time to practice and you eventually achieve some level. And you can frame that into talking about your integrity, your discipline, and things like that. So make sure these experiences and accomplishments that you had throughout school pop out as a story instead of like just meaningless words. So if you want me to create a video where I reveal the cover letter and resume that I used to land this job at Deloitte Consulting, then please write in the comment section below. Now let me quickly talk about these unconventional methods of getting into consulting. So like I said, I personally got the job through cold applying so basically just submitting my application through the career website, going through the resume screening, and then the interview loop process. There are definitely, I wouldn't say easier, but other ways to get into consulting as well. So essentially think of these methods as bypassing the resume screening process. So number one, networking and career events. Companies host networking events all the time. And yes, they are worth going to. So that was a mistake that I made when I was an undergrad student. I thought they were a waste of time and companies are just there to advertise their companies. But these connections actually do lead to full-time jobs. So for instance, I actually have been at the other end of the table where I was a representative from Deloitte at a networking event. And generally how network events go, as you probably know, is just like a bunch of people mingling and hanging around in a room. I had a candidate come up to me that told me about his experience and I thought he was a stellar candidate. So I ended up connecting the candidate to the partner that I worked for. So obviously my partner has the hiring power and the hiring decision. They went through the interview process and he was hired as a full-time and he ended up working with us. So once you're at a networking event, go to these events and set a goal of talking to every single person in the room. And yes, and I mean every single person. So this is actually a tip that my old boss gave me when I was an intern for another company. He said, you will never know if the last person that you talked to or the person that you ended up not talking to will be that person that connects you to that job. Now beware, when you're interacting with these people, you have to be genuine. Of course, don't race to the room with the goal of, I have to talk to every single person, I don't have time, so I'm only gonna budget two minutes with, with each person and let me boom, 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 get through all of them. Because obviously it's gonna show. Be curious about their stories, their experience, and when it's your chance to talk, Make sure you have a planned out 
good, concise story that highlights all of your achievements and your ambitions. Like I said, this whole topic about having your own story is very, very, very important. And I'm sure that you've all heard of like the term elevator pitch where in a short amount of time, you have to be able to explain like your own story. So make sure that you're prepared to give that elevator pitch. Number two, hackathons. So recently hackathons has been a hotbed for tech consulting recruitment. So tech consulting needs good technical talent and what better place to poach good young tech talent other than hackathons. So I think this is kind of a lesser known one for consulting companies where they hire out of hackathons, but consulting companies have recently increased their presence at hackathons. When I was working at Deloitte, we also have given out internship positions on the spot during hackathons. So bring your resume and prepare to have an interview on the spot. And also as a similar advice to networking events, make sure you have a good story to tell. Because honestly, I've also been at hackathons where I was in the position to recruit interns. And you have to realize that I have to make a decision within 30 seconds if you're a candidate that's worth moving forward with or sending away. So make sure to have a good compelling story. Number three, referrals. Yes, this is a very boring one, but it is also the one that works the best. If you know someone that works at the company that you wanna apply for, it's definitely worth asking for a referral. Honestly, it's a win-win situation. You get a job and they get free money. So if you have tried all the above methods and were not successful, it doesn't mean you can't have a career in consulting. Gain some industry work experience and then apply again. Like I said, in consulting, they look for candidates of diverse backgrounds and skill sets. So once you have gained more experience in a field, you will have a better shot of landing a job in consulting. Like I keep saying, you just need to have a good story to tell. Maybe that gap that you have can be filled by work experience. Anyways, that was it. I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to hear more about my consulting stories or my stories being in the tech industry, please like and subscribe. And also if there are other topics or videos that you want me to cover in regards to my various experiences in consulting, please let me know in the comment section below. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.